Does that work? Yeah. There we go. Good afternoon and welcome here. My name is Kennedy Froze. I am the associate pastor here at Sterling. For the family in the room this morning, I just or this afternoon, I just want to say welcome. I hope you feel loved and supported by the people here with you and also by the many people on Zoom who wish they could be in this room. To the people on Zoom, both family, friends, and community, I also want to welcome you here this, morning, this afternoon. Um, one of the ways that we want to support the family of Kathy is we want to do a guest book. Um, and so that is a normal thing for when we are in person, but when we can't be together, the way that we are going to do this is if you want to type in the chat in the Zoom, there should be a little chat box. You can click on that and write a message just with your name and, and some condolences. Uh, those will be compiled after the service and will be given to the family. So if you would like to do that, please feel free. We have gathered here this afternoon in memory of Kathy Hildebrandt as an act of honor and love. We have gathered to grieve the loss of a beautiful presence in our life. So we gather in sorrow, in sadness, and in mourning. We also rejoice for the time we had with her, treasuring the memories of her in our hearts. And also, we rest assured that Kathy is now at rest with God, no longer suffering, no longer in pain, and for that we are comforted. And so we gather with this jumble of emotions, recognizing that God holds all these feelings with us, and we know that we are not alone. Please pray with me as we begin the service. Creator God, we have come here together to grieve and to comfort one another in our sorrow. As we celebrate and mourn the life of Kathy, we draw upon you for strength and peace. May we feel your presence with us this afternoon. Amen. We will now have a congregational song. I invite you to sing along if you'd like. We will then have Gerald, Kathy's son, come up and give the obituary. And then uh, Connie, Kathy's daughter, and Carrie, her granddaughter, will come up and give tributes. Thank you. is 
Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art Kathy Agnes Hildebrand, Nee Martins, passed away peacefully at Poseidon Personal Care Home on January 11, 2022, at the age of 85. Kathy was born on August 31, 1936, at Concordia Hospital in Winnipeg, to Gerhard and Margaret Martins. She was the oldest of five children. The family moved shortly after her birth from Domain to Starbuck and farmed there until 1953, when they moved to Randolph. She attended Elam Bible School in Altona, where she met Edwin Hildebrand. Shortly thereafter, they married in October of 1959 and enjoyed over 62 years together. After marrying, they settled on Edwin's family farm near Mather and successfully farmed together until 1994. During that time, they raised a daughter and two sons. They moved off the farm in 1994 and retired to the city of Winnipeg. In spite of retirement, Kathy kept busy with volunteer work at Victoria Hospital Gift Shop and the Canadian Diabetes Offices. Her dedication to volunteering earned her the Active Living Award presented to her by the Mayor of Winnipeg in 2010. Kathy was also an avid gardener and spent many hours in her yard planting, weeding, and caring for her beautiful flowers. Kathy's life was rooted in her faith and her love of God. She was baptized in 1955 in Steinbeck Mennonite Church and was active, along with her husband Ed, in the churches she attended in both Mather and Winnipeg. Kathy is survived by her husband Edwin, her daughter Connie, husband Peter Dunford, her sons Gerald, wife Barb Hildebrand, and son Daryl, wife Pam Hildebrand, as well as seven grandchildren, Carrie, husband Ken, Ryan, Adam, Taryn, Eric, Keegan, and Haley, and two great-grandchildren, Lucas and Emily. She's also, she is also survived by two sisters, Margaret and Lena Martins, numerous sisters and brother-in-laws, nieces and nephews. She was predeceased by her brothers Abe and Henry Martins in 2020 and a son-in-law Byron Schwarzenberger in 2009. She was also predeceased by two sister-in-laws and four brother-in-laws. 
If friends so desire, donations can be made in memory of Kathy Hildebrand to MCC Manitoba or Sterling Mennonite Fellowship. We want to thank you for joining our family here and via Zoom to celebrate Mom's life. My brothers and I have spent the last few days reminiscing about Mom. We thought we would share a few memories of her today with you all. Mom enjoyed her gardening, but Mom's garden on the farm was very different from her garden in the city. Her farm garden was there to provide food for the winter. We all remember planting long, long, long rows of potatoes, then weeding them, then hilling them, and then digging them out and hauling the, hauling the half-ton load into the basement potato bin. We also picked cucumbers, peas, onions, carrots, tomatoes, raspberries, strawberries, you name it. When mom and dad retired to Winnipeg in 1994, she found enjoyment in the floral side of gardening. She spent hours planning on what to plant, where to plant it, and then take care to water and fertilize it. You'll see it in the slideshow of her flowers were there to be envied. One of Mum's other loves was cooking and baking for other people. As you may know, our family has many dietary needs, which makes planning a family meal no easy task. Mom always had food for the sugar-free, gluten-free, peanut-free, low-sodium, as well as other special night dietary needs. Mom was a person of detail. If you called Mom and asked what she had made for supper, you make sure that you were sitting comfortably and ready for a lengthy answer. Included in the details would be her recipe, which recipe book it came from, where she bought the ingredients, and how much they cost. On top of that, you might also hear about who she met at the store the day where she, that day and where she knew them from. She would then tell us how it turned out and what she might do uh, the next time to improve it, which may have included that she would only use two cups instead of two and a quarter cups of one ingredient. She even kept a detailed record book with dates on who she fed what meal so that you weren't likely to get the same meal twice. Speaking of meals, Mom didn't take many days off, but you knew when she told us that it was Dad's turn to cook, it meant they were going to a restaurant for supper. When it came to playing games with Mom, it was by the rules, no exceptions and she was competitive, we would often play until Mom had at least won once, even if it was past our bedtime. Another thing we all remember is Mom's inability to sit down, relax, or take a break. When she did say that she was going to sit down and relax, you could set the stopwatch and be fairly certain that it would not get to a full minute before she re realized there was something else that she needed to get done. Mom was a dedicated volunteer at Victoria Hospital gift shop. She went once a week for 15 plus years. This was in addition to her volunteering at the Canadian Diabetes Office. Mom enjoyed walking. Some of her favorite walking trails were St. Patel Centre and Polo Park Mall. In earlier years on the farm, going to Brandon to shop was a big event. If any of you ever walked with her, you know you might have a hard time keeping up with her. We enjoyed many family trips together. I remember Mom was always ready to go on a moment's notice in case Dad came in and said, we could go for a couple days now. And Mom was always the navigator. She was the forerunner to GPS. On our longer trips to California and BC, she was also the tours coordinator, the sandwich maker, 
and mediator for the three in the back seat. We enjoyed many short trips to do Detroit Lakes, Black Hills, and to Clear Lake with Mum's Jansen relatives. If you know Mum, you know she was organized. If you have ever been to her home and peeked in any of her kitchen or bathroom drawers, you would see the bottom of cornflakes boxes cut off to the right height of the drawer for organization. She has all the photo albums arranged in date order. She didn't ha like having any extra stuff around either. If you hadn't worn a certain piece of clothing for a season, it went to the bag for MCC thrift shop. I think dad even had to go shopping to the thrift store once to buy back his shirt that matched one of his pairs of pants. Mom's skills were not just in organization and meal preparation. It was also in her truck driving skills when she was hauling grain on the farm. I can relate. I also was proud of my truck driving skills in those days. I guess the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. This gives you a glimpse of who our mother was. We love you, Mom, and we'll miss all of these things and more. I think I might touch on some similar themes here. Uh, I'm Carrie, the oldest grandchild. I'm up here for my brothers, Ryan and Adam, my cousins, Taryn and Eric, the self-proclaimed grandma's favorite, my husband, Ken, and my kids, the great-grandchildren, Lucas and Emily. So we were talking about grandma, and one of the main things that came up was food. Uh, everyone had their favorites, and Grandma remembered them all. She made German pancakes and Vrenica and Schmotvat, jello salad, watermelon and rollkuchen, fospa, and rhubarb plots, and doodles. The great-grandchildren are lucky enough to have multiple great-grandparents. So to help keep them straight, they gave her the nickname Ice Cream Grandma, because they could always count on ice cream when they came to visit. Grandma was always up for playing a game with any of us. Trouble and Rummacube and puzzles were a favorite. So were mini sticks for some of us. Uh, but you had to watch out. Grandma played by the rules, but she also played to win. And she would never take it easy on any of us, no matter how old we were. Grandma was a marathon shopper. She had the stamina to go from store to store and try on just one more thing. She was always positive and encouraging about whatever you were looking for. Sometimes you could even pick your own Christmas gift. But when it came time to open it, you had your work cut out for you. She used more tape than anyone you've ever known. <laughs> Grandma just wanted to spend time with us and hear about our lives. She asked us questions and was endlessly patient about hearing the answers. We're going to miss her treats, her games, her support, and her bone-crushing hugs. We love you, Grandma, and we'll miss you.
Surely goodness and love will follow me all of the days, all the days of my now invite Daryl, uh, Kathy's second son, uh, up to do scripture reading, and following that, Pastor Moses will come to give the message. I'm reading from John 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, and that you you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And the second scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Thank you, Daryl, for reading scripture for us and for Connie and for Carrie for the tributes and Gerald for reading the obituary for Sharon for playing for Jess and Byron for leading us in song for Kennedy leading us uh, in in worship today we've had a few opportunities over these last few days to be together to share cries to hear from one another the stories of Kathy. But again, I want to say condolences to you as a family, uh, to those joining online on Zoom. Um, you as well have had Kathy as a special part of your lives for many years. And so I pass on my condolences to you as well. I don't know, uh, you wouldn't know this, um, but just before I came up, I I checked and we have about 140 screens watching this service. And just like the pandemic, this can seem like an isolating time, right? And, And you are here as a family together, but the pews around you are empty. 
But I'd love for you to imagine, you know, 140 screens means at least 200 people plus who are watching this service. And if it were in person, they would be here. They would be hugging you and sharing their condolences, supporting you, singing with you. And so we recognize that this is a difficult time. But my prayer is that you would know the support that you have. And of course, also know that God walks with you in these times. For those who don't know who I am, my name is Moses and I'm one of the pastors here at Sterling. For the past 10 years, I've had the chance to get to know Kathy and Ed and, and the family. And uh, over the past seven years, I've had the privilege of being Kathy's pastor. And that has me meant being on the receiving end of a lot of the hospitality that Kathy will be remembered for. Visiting together with Kathy and you, Ed, uh, in your place, often just for a cup of tea or even for a meal, and just to chat about how things were going, um, where things were at with life, how the family was doing, all those things. And it's also meant that in the last couple years, I've had to visit Kathy in different places, in the hospital, in the nursing home, um, and I was honored to be part of those who were able to visit her this past Monday before she passed away. I wanted also to, to pass on, I made a note not to forget this. You know, we've had so many people calling the church this week saying, how do we get on the service? We wanna make sure we can be there. And this morning I got a call from Mather, from Larry Redpath, who made sure to say that if this were in person, you'd have a ton of people coming from Mather to be here. And so he wanted me to make sure that I said that the big group from Mather that knows you, they love you and they are supporting you and sending their greetings and love to you. You know, I love these chances where we get to get to know more about somebody. You know, you as the family, the things that were shared are probably no surprises, you know. I didn't know that she was known as the ice cream great grandma. That's, that's really cool. And to get special insights into her life. By the time I knew her, I never got to see any garden. Uh, but to know how beautiful those gardens were, to see those pictures, so wonderful. I, I keep learning so many things. It was, it was just today, actually, that I realized, Ed, your real name is Edwin. I always thought it was Edward. <laughs> see, I'm still learning. <laughs> but we want to take a, just a few moments to look at some scripture. And you will know, family, that um, yesterday we looked at a passage of scripture at Kathy's viewing. And the reason we looked at that scripture was because it was written down in her Bible. And now, Daryl, you've had the opportunity to read from her Bible. And in that front cover where that passage was written from 1 Corinthians 13, there are two other scripture passages that Kathy had noted down. One of them was John chapter 14, and the other was from 2 Corinthians. The passage in John chapter 14 stood out to us right away because as Ed and I went into her room on Monday night, we prayed with her and we read that passage of scripture. I had no idea that it was written down in her Bible and we still don't know why or when she wrote it, but she wrote down that passage from John chapter 14. It's a passage that actually has to do with a group of people who were very troubled who were uneasy, who were uncomfortable. This group of people were the disciples of Jesus. Young men who had gathered around Jesus, had decided to follow after Jesus, and who just in the chapter before were being told that Jesus' time was coming to an end. Jesus, the great servant at the Last Supper, washed the feet of the disciples, but then told them that he was going to be betrayed, that he was going to be handed over. And that, of course, troubled the disciples. They, they saw Jesus as a teacher, a great leader. In fact, they saw Jesus as the Messiah who had come to save the whole world. But that Jesus would be betrayed, that he would be handed over, that he would be put on trial, that he would be killed, was 
unspeakable. And so the disciples were troubled. And that's when Jesus starts to tell them in John chapter 14. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me to be with me, that where I am, there you may also be. You know the way to the place where I am going. But then Thomas, one of the disciples, asked him, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, well, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This story, in many ways, reminds me of Kathy's last few years. And you, as the family, have been walking with her throughout the difficulties, challenges, illnesses, hospitalizations, all these things that Kathy has been through. You've been there. Her community, though, and I'm speaking specifically about us as a church, we've watched that all from Zoom, email updates, and phone calls. Something striking, Connie, I don't know if you remember saying this last Sunday, uh, but people remember saying that we wouldn't have remembered Kathy the same way, the way she was now. We remember the energetic, the hospitable, the funny, the always having to do something, Kathy. And it just kind of lined up with the pandemic. That as the pandemic started, we started to hear more updates that things weren't looking right. And because of that, Kathy has had to make many moves from place to place. I think what Kathy really wanted and Ed, I think you know this, that when you sold your place and moved into Parkway, that you would have gone together. And she mentioned that many times when I went to visit her in the nursing home, she said, this is not where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> I want to be with Ed. I want to be together in that new place that we talked about, the new place that we saw. But she had to move from place to place, to the hospital, back home, to the nursing home, back to the hospital, and back. And not to mention, in the last few months, every three, two, three days, going to the hospital for dialysis. Whenever I talked to Kathy, it seemed to me that she was troubled, that she wasn't quite settled. Yes, she always was thankful for her family, for friends, for, you know, all the things that she had. But that's not the way that things were meant to be. That's not the way she wanted them. She moved from place to place, from room to room, from dwelling place to dwelling place, never quite being where she truly wanted to be. Well, on Tuesday, early in the morning, Kathy passed on to the kind of dwelling place that Jesus told the troubled disciples of. The kind of place that Jesus had gone to prepare for Kathy, not only for Kathy, but for all of us. All those who believe in Jesus have a place in God's dwelling. It's a place which the most amazing part of it is that it's the place where God is. It's the place where God dwells. And in a sense, as being an adopted child of God, as we all are, Kathy was returning home. Returning to that final room, that final resting place. And unlike all these places that she's been in in the last few years, the hospital rooms, the dialysis rooms, the nursing home rooms, this place, as is described for us in Revelation, is a place where there will be no more crying, no more death, no more mourning, and no more pain. For the old order of things will have passed away. It is a place 
where God dwells. And in that sense, we can say that Kathy has truly gone home. But that's not the end of the story, because death, we believe, is not the end. And we find in Kathy's Bible another scripture passage that was written down. And this one, Daryl also read for us, it comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, starting at verse 17, we read that therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. You see, the hope that we have now is that this new place, and we don't know what it looks like, right? We call it heaven. We call it many things. We, we don't really know what it's like. All we know is that we trust that Kathy is in the presence of God and is in God's eternal care. But at some point, whatever that heaven is, whatever that place is, God will return to merge that with the earth that is and renew all things and make all things new. Kathy, because of her faith, already had that new creation within her. She was already a new creation. And she had the hope and she trusted that one day God was going to come back to finish the job, to make all things do. And when that time comes, then we all too will be in that dwelling place, that dwelling place where God is, where there will be no more mourning or death or crying or pain, but where God will be present to us. Family, I want to tell you how much I admire your care for Kathy. Over these past few um, months and years, I have seen the amount of sacrifice it has taken to care for her. You all did such a great job in caring for Kathy. And this last place, this last dwelling place where she has passed on to, you haven't been able to go with her. And that leaves us unsettled. We know that at some point our time will come too. It's not now, but it will come. But Kathy's gone ahead of us. And so for us, as those who remain, as those who are continued to be unsettled and um, have to figure out what life looks like without Kathy, let me just close by reading these words of Jesus for us. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you with me so that where I am, there you may also be. You know the way to where I am going. And we might ask, well, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? I am the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus says. No one comes to the Father except through me. Let me close in prayer. God, I thank you for this time where we can gather together as family and friends to remember the life of your child, Kathy. I thank you for the life that you have given her, the 85 years that she has had, the people that you have brought in her way, the many lives and hearts that she has touched. I thank you for the ways in which you have provided for her and her family, and how she, out of her love for others, has been able to serve and to help those in need. God, we know that Kathy was not perfect. We know that she had her own things that she struggled with. But God, I thank you that because of your grace, you have given Kathy new life. You have forgiven Kathy 
And now, Kathy, can rest in your dwelling place, in your presence. God, for those of us who are left behind and who are figuring out what it now means to move on without Kathy by our side, I pray for strength, for comfort, for peace, for courage, and that we would remember the things that Kathy has taught us, that we would hold close to our hearts the faith and the hope and the love that she carried. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to hear a song Byron and Jess are going to sing, a song that is taken right from these words from John chapter 14. Moses took the time to thank some of the people you've seen on stage this, this afternoon, um, and I thank you again for the ways that you have honored Kathy. I also want to acknowledge Jeff Hebert and Emily Hebert, who've been behind the screens making sure Zoom ran well for us today, and also Ralph Bartell, who cleared snow for us. So it takes, it takes a whole community to care and support one another, and I think this is a perfect example of that. Um, we will be closing our service shortly, but before we do, I just want to remind people that if you have not filled out um, the guest book or the Zoom chat, I encourage you to do so. And we are now going to be doing something a little bit different as a way to also enhance the guest book. Um, 
we want to see your faces and we want to uh, show the family your faces, all the people who are here to support them. It, it's hard to know that without seeing the faces. So if you could turn your Zoom cameras on, if that's not uh, too intimidating to ask, um, and we will take screenshots of all the, all the screens. That way we can see who, who, is happen who is here, who is here with us this afternoon. So please turn your cameras on now. And then um, once that has kind of happened, Jeff will take a screenshot for us. We will take it while we sing. There we go. So if you could leave your Zoom cameras on while we hear the last song. And as we conclude our service today, we will end with a song, um, but I will offer a benediction as well. And I just, I just want us to um, leave this space thinking of Kathy and being encouraged by a life well lived, a beautiful model of love and care for us all. So the benediction. May the truth that sets us free and the hope that never dies and the love that casts out fear be with us now until a new dawn breaks and the shadows flee away. We have been blessed by life. Go in peace. with
Well. 